like that child my life was golden moving in these streets without being Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. I'd like to thank Mayor Eric Adams for joining us. Also here is Chief of Detectives James Essick and Deputy Chief Jason Savino. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge some of the detectives and some of the prosecutors who worked directly on this case for the past two years. Uh, we're here again want to talk about gangs and guns and the violence that they caused throughout Brooklyn. Uh, I remain fully committed working with our police department to find these perpetrators of gun violence and hold them accountable so we can prevent more gang violence from happening in our county. This is a historical indictment we're about to announce going back and solving past shootings. Um, much of these gang members are invo involved in the violence that we all read about, uh, we all experience, and the kind of violence that causes families to be afraid to let their children go out in the evenings. Uh, today, we announce the indictment of 32 uh, women and men who are responsible for two dozen violent incidents uh, with 13 people uh, being injured, one critically wounded, and ultimately someone who passed away from gunshot wounds. Also, three innocent bystanders were shot as a result of the, this, this gun violence. During the course of this investigation, uh, we believe 32 firearms were used or possessed by these gang members. You see a number of them here on the table. Uh, about 20 of them are here today. Uh, this is really, quite honestly, a continuation of the type of gang violence we're seeing in our county where two gangs join together uh, to become more prominent, to have more geographical dominance, and really, quite frankly, to ha have more access to these deadly firearms. The main gang involved in this case today are the A. Trey Crips. Um, they're there, and there you'll see them on the board. Um, in the top center, sort of in the black shadow, you'll see Michael Williams. Now, many of you are familiar with Michael Williams because he's a fairly successful uh, musician. He rap music. Um, he's in the center. To his left, you'll see another person named Tegan Chambers. Tegan uh, is known as Sleepy Hollow. He's an al also a rapper of prominence. Chef G became, Michael Williams is also known as Chef G, he became a prominent member of this gang and became central to our investigation, quite frankly, as his music career uh, continued to shine. Uh, he established a record label, uh, ultimately joining uh, with Tegan Chambers, that record label, uh, had a deal with RCA Records, which is owned by Sony Music. And quite honestly, if you ask your children, uh, if they're listening to these guys, you'll hear Chef G and uh, Tegan Chambers, Sleepy Hollow, on their playlist. So these are fairly prominent musicians. What we allege and what we learned during the course of this investigation is that Chef G used a lot of the money that he earned to help facilitate uh, further gang activity. He encouraged gang members to participate in violent crimes. We'll talk more about Chef G in a few minutes, but before I do that, let's talk about the other members that joined with the A Trays. I see the second face board. Those are nine way gang members. It's another crew that joined together. And together, these, this crew formed an alliance. Uh, this alliance waged war against their mutual enemies, the Notorious Folk Nation Gang and the ICG Babies. Let's see a map. It's a map of central to southern Brooklyn. What you'll see is the different geographic areas where these gangs operated out of. Um, 
And so what you see is that this really <coughs> contained a large swath of Brooklyn, from central Brooklyn down to southern Brooklyn, really from Prospect Lefferts Gardens, all the way into Flatbush, into East Flatbush, down to Canarsie <coughs> and into Brownsville. And so you can see where they operated out of as these gangs create this geographic dominance, as they continue to expand their territories, uh, there are more you know, conflicts and more rivalries happen. And so we'll see, we're starting to see this happening. These gangs are joining together to become more powerful. And as a result, we're all a lot less safe. Now, before we talk about one of the serious incidents covered by this indictment, um, Part of what's happening in these cases is that social media beefs and taunts continue to happen. In this particular case, we allege that Chef G, Michael Williams, was engaged in social media taunts with, a, with another rapper who belongs to the Folk Nation gang. Those taunts became serious and acted upon, um, and it's a pattern of encouragement that we've seen through uh, the social media postings and some of the texts that were obtained during the investigation. There's a shooting that took place in October of 2020, um, and uh, that shooting is classified as a mass shooting. The lead up to that mass shooting started about a week earlier, uh, where Chef G was engaged in taunts with this folk nation uh, rapper. Um, and during that incident, um, it was decided that the Folk Nation uh, headquarters, to, where they hung out on Hawthorne Street, would be targeted. Um, as a result of that targeting, uh, six people were shot, one of them fatally shot. Uh, in the video you're about to see, you're going to see a stolen white infinity drive up the block back into a parking uh, driveway, um, and then you will see a person pop out of the sunroof, the open sunroof, start shooting. There'll be also people shooting from the, pass from the driver's side windows. Uh, in total, we estimate over 30 shots were fired. You'll see there are a number of people across the street that they're shooting at, including uh, men and women. Um, and then you'll see something that will show you how dangerous and coordinated these attacks are. You'll see a second vehicle that's also stolen. It was an SUV that was used as a blocker vehicle um, to block the police or block anyone from following the shooting car. And you'll see that the blocker vehicle, as the shooting begins, blocks the intersection and allows the shooting car to escape, driving the wrong way up a one-way street onto traffic where it's been sort of cordoned off for them to escape. Um, one of the people identified in charge with the murder in this case is that man, Commandre Kamand Decatu. He is a member of the ATRE gang. And if you see prominently on his neck, he has uh, the symbol of his gang in eight and a three. Let's play this video. Okay, that is the vehicle You'll see the vehicle now reverse into this driveway. And we're gonna see this from two different angles. And now out the sunroof and out the windows, three gunmen are firing. This car goes up the one-way street in the wrong direction. Right, here's another angle. By the way, this car was stolen and the license plates were changed. There's the blocker car, the SUV. It's now going to cut off the intersection to allow the car that's going to commit the shooting to escape, coming up to Wong Ray Street. Then it immediately follows.
across the street, you see a lot of people hanging out. The shooting vehicle is going to be all the way to the far left of the video. You won't be able to see that that clearly, but you'll see the people running. And if you see closely, you'll see the vehicle turning in the opposite direction and flee. If you're watching, you'll be able to see a man who gets shot right there fall to the ground. Fortunately, that person survived the shooting. Pure mayhem, uh, women and men. There was a, a female victim of that shooting as well. Uh, again, pure mayhem. A 23-year-old man named Theodore Sr. was fatally killed during the shooting. I've already said five other people uh, were wounded, some with serious injuries to their bodies. Uh, def Defendant Dekatu is charged with murder, as well as his co-conspirators, uh, including in the conspiracy is Chef G and his sister, Crystal Williams. They're charged with conspiracy to commit murder for these shootings, as well as for their roles in encouraging other shootings. Specifically, before this homicide took place, there are messaging that we allege Crystal Williams sent to her brother, Chef G, who told her brother that, the, that one of the main Folk Nation members had to get hit or killed, and only after, one hour after this shooting, uh, Michael Williams, aka Chef G, is communicating with a trusted gang member, and he's asking if the trays had scored, and he's asking for proof of that score um, to be sent to him uh, by screenshots. Just a few days later, Chef G takes the shooters from this incident and some other gang members for a very lavish, expensive steak dinner where they celebrate the score against their rivals. Um, there's video of that, and, and we're not showing that today, but that dinner was paid for in cash by Chef G celebrating the score um, that they had shot six people two days earlier. Now I'll tell you a little bit more about Michael Williams, AKA Chef G. He's a Brooklyn kid, he grew up in Flatbush. We believe he became gang involved at a very young age. Um, he got some notoriety as a drill rapper early in his life. Uh, but by 2017, he really started to have, you know, commercial success. He was really playing music that had been um, reached the masses. And as I've already said, he formed a record label with uh, his friend. Um, RCA Records bought that label. And obviously, RCA Records is owned by Sony Music. He teamed up with Tegan Chambers, who's known as Sleepy Hollow. Uh, and their music is all over you know, Spotify and that. But I think the import here is that Chef G is not a wannabe drill rapper. He is a legitimate uh, person who made it, made it good. Um, he has gold records, he's made a lot of money. He rented a very large house, some dare call it a mansion in Short Hills, New Jersey, where he was staying. Um, he has millions of monthly listeners and over 100 million views on social media including on YouTube and Spotify. Uh, but instead of using his fame and his fortune for the betterment of himself and his family and those close to him, we allege that he used that fame and fortune to elevate gang violence in Brooklyn. Uh, we learned that Chef G encouraged shootings, often by offering money or jewelry, um, by hosting extravagant affairs like the dinner we mentioned, um, and using rap songs to help hype up fellow gang members. We also have direct information that Chef G had access to a large number of firearms and weapons, um, which we believe may have been used to su further supply the gang um, with these deadly firearms. Most importantly, we also allege that he had direct and active involvement in some of these shootings uh, let's see a photo that was captured from one of his phones. There you can see some of the photos that are 
in his cell phone. This is one of the cell phones that he had when he was arrested. Um, obviously, you see the AK-style rifles on top. There's some handguns. Down below, you see a number of brand new firearms in the case with the tags still on them and also with other accessories like ammunition on the bottom. There are two photos in the middle of uh, Michael Williams, Chef G, holding and displaying guns. And then to your far right in the, with the black hoodie on and the chef gold chain, that's a video. Let's quickly, and there was a lot of these videos, we're just gonna play one of them. Let's just show that video. Otherwise, niggas, niggas don't be outside like that, gang. Hold on, what a, what a big dutty, what a big dutty. This was a direct taunt at one of his rivals in the car with him. In the back is Sleepy Hollow, um, the other uh, rapper, and the guy, Dekatu, who was charged with murder, the one who popped out of the Infinity sun, uh, Sunroof. Um, now, the issue um, for us is why would someone of his stature um, continue to engage in this kind of violence. We're going to play a very short video of uh, Chef G buying a very expensive Jeep Cherokee. Um, it's only relevant um, because that vehicle is later used in a shooting, a shooting that we believe uh, the evidence shows that he was directly responsible for. So let's play this video. This is posted on YouTube. That's Michael Williams, Chef G. It's a very upscale Jeep Grand Cherokee. I think it's called a track hawk. So remember this video um, of this vehicle because you're going to see it. Um, involved in the shooting that took place on April 6, uh, 2021. What's important to know about this shooting is that a day before or two days before, um, Chef G's home in Short Hills was attacked and was shot up. And he believed and the gang believed uh, that rivals had, um, were responsible for shooting his home up in New Jersey. Recovered text messages between Chef G and a guy named Olivelle Martinez, um, who's a fellow gang member, but also the boyfriend of his sister, Crystal Williams, surmised that one of their fellow gang members had to betray them to give up Chef G's secret house in Short Hills. And so there's a lot of conversation around um, getting revenge on the gang member who had betrayed them. Um, and the gang, the A Trays and Nine Ways, spent months trying to track this individual down for retribution for giving up his home. Um, what you're going to see in this video is Michael Williams, who we allege is the driver of the vehicle, Tony Darden, and Oliver Martinez, and uh, the other folk, uh, Kendrick Austry. Those two men are first cousins to Michael Williams, Chef G, and then, like I said, Oliver Martinez dates his sister. They're trying to get revenge on the person that they believe is responsible for giving up Chef G's house in New Jersey. And when that house was shot up, there were family members in the home. Um, and so what you're going to see is there's three guys there. They start to shoot up the block towards the top of the TV monitor. That white SUV you see on the right-hand corner is actually on the same side of the street that they're on. It's just there so you can see it. Um, so that's further up the block towards the checkers. And uh, you'll see one victim get shot there, a 43-year-old woman, um, innocent bystander, then up the block by the checkers. There's a 53-year-old male who gets shot um, completely innocent bystander. You'll then see the three men after they engage in the shooting, run back to this Tomahawk Jeep 
that you just saw in the other video in that, vi that car drive away. I can tell you right now that the license plates and the info GPS on the car puts it at the scene before, during, and after the shooting. And there's a lot of other evidence, um, including uh, when the car is ultimately abandoned, um, evidence that we have that Chef G gets an Uber back to Short Hills after this, directly connecting him as the, the getaway driver. Plus there's other evidence, but let's play the video. Those are the three men. That's a woman who winds up getting shot, victim one. And there's a guy right there, victim two, by the checkers who gets shot in his shoulder. The three men run. Again, all related to Chef G. They get into that vehicle right here, which is the Jeep that we've been talking about. That Jeep takes off. The Jeep is followed. The police department do a great job in getting the video, following, getting license plates, doing everything they need to do. Gets on the highway. What I should say is that when they're shooting up the block, right there, if you know the neighborhood, the parade grounds is there, and there was a bunch of children playing soccer and scores of kids in the park who had a scatter from the shooting. Anyway, the Jeep takes off, and ultimately it's tracked into Manhattan where it's ditched and, and ultimately recovered by the police department. Um, I'll talk about this, uh, what they believe this turncoat who gave up Chef G's address. Ultimately, 10 members of the gang captured him one day, kidnapped him, drove him off to a cemetery in Brooklyn and started to um, beat him to death. Uh, he was saved because some random person called 911 and the police responded um, and video of the beating was captured. Uh, we're not gonna show it because it's so graphic, but to say that he came within inches of his life is not an understatement. Um, those individuals were charged with kidnapping and assault. Um, but the revenge went beyond this turncoat. They wanted to get revenge at the group they believe shot at Chef G's house. That was this group called the Babies. You'll see a text message between Chef G and his um, Oliver Martinez, which is the guy again who dates his sister, where they discuss targeting a rival ICG Babies gang member. Just the import of this is the exchange ends with Chef saying, SNM, say no more. This gets done. I got 5K for you. Later the same day, the shooting takes place. Now, it's going to be hard to see the shooting, but I'll orient you. It's a white SUV. It's stolen. It's a man crossing the street. He's a rival gang member from the from the group that is the you know involved that they believe is involved in the shooting of Chef G's house. That vehicle is stalking him, and as he starts to cross the street, that vehicle will make a left-hand turn. As they make the left-hand turn, you will not be able to see the shooting because the, the shooters are in the car. Um, but he shot seven times, point blank, in his chest. Let's play the video. Right there, he's being hit by the gunshots. You can see him, he tries to run away. And ultimately, as he gets to that corner, he collapses. He was shot seven times in the chest. He had multiple, multiple surgeries um, and was in the hospital for a really long time, for weeks upon weeks. He did survive this shooting, fortunately for him, and really fortunately for all of us. Um, Chef G is currently in jail um, on a unrelated gun charge. He was arrested by the police department and in, inside one of his vehicles that he was driving at that time, inside a trap in the car. He had a 45 caliber handgun. He's pled guilty to that case. Um, and he will now be arraigned on this new uh, indictment. But his involvement with the gang didn't end while he was incarcerated. Um, Tegan Chambers, among others, Tegan Chambers of Sleepy Hollow, continued to communicate with him and give him, you know, information about the activity of the gang. In fact, the investigation showed that after Chef G was arrested with the gun, he was very worried about what would be recovered 
from his cell phone and he asked uh, Tegan Chambers to wipe his phone to get rid of all of the, the, the data, um, including location data and financial data off his phone, which uh, Tegan Chambers had agreed to do. I want to be clear, because um, we spent a lot of time talking about Chef G. This is not an indictment about rap music. Um, in fact, this investigation did not rely on a single lyric to prove any of the alleged crimes. But it is an indictment of how when someone does well for themselves um, and could do real good in our community, they use their fame and they use their money uh, to further gang violence. Uh, we believe that much of the violence perpetrated by this gang was made possible because Michael Williams had a lot of cash. Um, and he promised members that if they put in the gang work, they would be rewarded either financially um, or appear in some of his videos or even get a, a record contract for themselves like Sleepy Hollow did. The very last slide that I'm going to show you, uh, because for those who think this, these cases do not make a difference. Um, this is a text message between Chef G, Olivo Martinez, and other gang members revolving around a press conference that we had right in this very room just two years, roughly two years ago. And there's a, a link to a, a YouTube. In that, they're talking about how one of their fellow gangs uh, had been arrested and taken down. And they're talking about the dangers of using social media and apps to communicate and convey and to do gang business. And in this particular case, they're talking about they got the information off the Telegram application, meaning the police and the DA's office. Um, I think that's a photo of me there. Um, so these things do matter. These gang members do pay attention to these, these cases. Um, and they're simply mistaken. So I'll, I'll, I'll make this clear. Um, it doesn't matter which social media company you use or what apps you use. If you're engaging in street violence, if you're taking guns and you're shooting rivals, if you're hurting innocent bystanders, the NYPD will eventually track your case um, and bring you to the court of law. These individuals are being arraigned as we speak and uh, they will be held accountable and they should expect long prison sentence. We surely will ask our judges to hold them accountable for what they did. Um, Chef G is looking at a minimum of five to 25 years for his involvement as are many of the 32 members that were arrested today. And obviously anyone who was involved in the homicide is looking at a life sentence. So I, I wanna be clear. Wiping your phone is not going to dissuade a prosecution. Um, these cases take time, but we will ultimately solve these cases. I am confident that this will improve public safety. This crew um, continue to shoot at each other. Um, and the less they're stopped, we know that the summer months are our hardest months for public safety and shootings. And so I am positive that this will have a measurable impact on public safety in Brooklyn, in particular in the Flatbush section, where many of these young men are from. Um, City of New York, under the mayor's leadership and the police department, Sewell, has continued to focus on shootings. And shootings are done, are down. Shootings are down in our city, they're down in our county, um, and we will continue to fight this good fight. I want to thank the NYPD for working on this case. These cases are very complicated. They're, they're pieced together. Um, and uh, very specifically, the NYPD's Violence Redux Reduction Task Force and the Gun Violence Suppression Division for putting this case together. For the, the ADAs in my office for about two years now, they've, they've worked to piece these 13 shootings together um, to make sure that families get justice that, that these crimes don't go unsolved, but most importantly, that we prevent future victimization. So thank you, Mayor, for being here. We're gonna have the Mayor speak, and then uh, Chief Essek and the Deputy Chief Savino. Thank you. thank you. Well done, well done. Uh, the uh, clear 
uh, layout of a well coordinated effort uh, that we see the district attorney's office and the New York City Police Department. Uh, people often talk about the alliances uh, that uh, violent gangs bring together. Let's be clear, we have a, an alliance of our own. It is the coordination of both these offices, of the men and women who are here, understanding that if we focus on the small number of extremely violent people who have made up their mind that they will continue to do violence no matter what happens. It doesn't matter if they reach fame and fortune, they're going to use that fame and fortune to enhance the, their ability to have access to dangerous guns. Uh, 21 guns, there's not four 21 guns salute, there are 21 guns to shoot our neighborhoods and our families in a total disregard for everyday New Yorkers who are walking our streets. And the intersectionality of what we have been talking about for some time is revealed in this case. This is a textbook case of all of the mechanisms that are being used. I'm strongly believer that TikTok is a ticking bomb when it continues to use and exploit inner city conflicts to promote violence. When you have millions of views, young people are listening and watching the views and there's a duplication of the behavior that is spreading like a cancer throughout our communities. It is not specifically drill music itself. It is those individuals who are using any platform to promote retaliatory violence. And that is what we are seeing over and over again. And all of us should be alarmed. We have communicated several times to our various social media platforms and stated that there is a moment of responsibility that comes with the impact that social media has on all Americans in general, but specifically on young people. If it's the IKEA car challenge, if it's young people doing challenges and burning themselves, 85% of their bodies, or if it's what we saw today, using the platforms to assist in criminal behavior and reaching hundreds of millions of people that are already dealing with some very dark moments when we look at post-pandemic. Can I thank the DA enough and the team that's here? We saw several years ago, immediately after major gang takedowns, we witnessed a substantial decrease in the shootings and violent crimes. We've done a great job of removing close to uh, 9,000 guns off our streets. We've seen a double-digit decrease in homicides. We've seen a decrease, a decrease in uh, double-digit decrease in shootings, a decrease in homicides. But if we continue to have this, and as we saw, the brand new guns awaited. We are constantly having to catch up. When you match the ready accessibilities of guns and those who are willing to use them anytime and anywhere in a very coordinated effort, you saw the sophistication of blocking off streets, targeting people, plotting out for months, the vicious beating in a cemetery. They're dangerous people. They're dangerous people. And it's a small number of them. They're repeated recidivists that as soon as you let them out, they're back on our streets. We can have it. We are not going to give up. We're not going to surrender our streets to violence. And that is proven today about the real alliance that matters. And that is this district attorney's office and the New York City Police Department. And all of the innocent people that live in this city that are applauding today that we remove dangerous people from their neighborhoods. Again, District Attorney, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, been standing up here for the better part of 10 years uh, working with the DA, Eric Gonzalez, and his staff, and none do a better job throughout the city of 
doing these type of cases. Mm -hmm. Also want to thank uh, Jason Savino, the commanding officer of the Gun Violence Suppression Division, who will be here and I'll update you on the case. These are long-term, difficult, in-depth cases, but the benefits are tremendous. In each and every case, violence in the infected area, in this case, East Flatbush and the Flatbush section, will, violence will be dramatically decreased. We know this by previous cases. In this particular case, gang members, whether they were the A-Tray, the Nine-Tray, or G-Stone Crips, terrorized these neighborhoods for the better part of three years. This investigation began shortly after the gang-related shooting of six people in October 2020 at 265 Hawthorne Street, one of which resulted in a homicide. No longer will these 32 individuals shoot their guns in the streets of New York City, and we as a city are safer for that. I just want to introduce uh, the commanding officer of the Gun Violence Suppression Division, Jason Savino, will take you through the case. Well, thank you, and, and certainly thank you to everybody out there. You know, I, when I had a vantage point just watching everybody and the reactions that we see to these videos, that's what it's all about. We want to make our streets safe, and we thank everybody for your coverage. So good afternoon. Our members at Gun Violence Suppression Division, along with our partners standing before you, we share a mission and obligation to decrease and attempt to eliminate completely gun violence, to bring justice and protection to our beautiful members of this city, to do everything possible to keep our members safe. And as promised, we stood here not too long ago, as promised, we are standing here collectively once again, just so proud and honored to announce that today, our beloved Brooklyn is once again a bit safer, with some of the worst of the absolute worst now in custody. But just before I go into the investigation, I just want to just extend extreme gratitude to our case detectives. We wouldn't be here without them. Uh, detective, newly promoted Sergeant, Joe Calabres, Christopher Kelly. These two individuals just work so tremendously, along with our partners, which I'll circle back to. But these detectives just showcased absolutely exceptional drive, dedication, and determination towards one goal and why we took this job, keeping our public safe. I also have to mention just briefly the team leaders who supervised the case, uh, Captain Ryan Gillis, along with Lieutenant Sal Schiovi, and Sergeant Dave Zayas, who just provided enormous guidance throughout the entire investigation and in essence enabled this accomplishment. And I have to just note that we're just so blessed with an entire team at Gun Violence Suppression Division, we consider and treat the members of our community much like family. We take it personal and out, we, we will certainly fulfill our mission. So this takedown, and we have some more in the hopper, shows our team will remain absolutely relentless in combating this irrational gun violence. Let's get right into the case. So A-Tray is an investigation into several violent gangs that fall under the Blood and Crip umbrellas. Namely, as mentioned earlier, uh, A-Tray Crips, G-Stone Crips, and Nine-Tray Bloods. Now, these gangs are aligned and all represent the Wu. Now, that Wu may sound familiar to many people, and for good reason. It's just tremendously, tremendously popular and really recognized worldwide, that Wu name. So the case was initiated to combat violence in and around East Flatbush and Flatbush, and certainly extends into Canarsie, um, Crown Heights, Brownsville. So really covers a significant portion of Brooklyn. Now, with this case, as all of our cases, we utilize our next level precision policing policies and address the trigger pullers, those few individuals, as the mayor alluded to earlier, that make it downright hazardous for all the great people in our community. Case in point, when you look at those boards that were up earlier, 32 subjects, 24 of those 32 are being charged with attempted murder or worse on at least one occasion. And very much worth noting, Eight of the 32 have allegedly fired a gun on more than three occasions. Now think about that. Eight individuals have allegedly fired a pistol, endangering our public, on at least three occasions. Simply put, these are the shooters. 
that small group of individuals, the alphas of each gang, those very few that endanger themselves and everybody around them. Let's speak to the gangs as a whole. I like to use the three R's. Reckless, ruthless, and relentless. These are subjects that woke up and lived every single day with one objective, and that was to benefit the gang, gain clout for the gang. How do you do that? You shoot ops for the gang. And all this was done strictly to send a message of gang dominance. Much of this violence was fueled and rewarded by rapper Chef G, who was quite often seen with his prodigy, Sleepy Hollow. Now, these are no small time rappers. Sleepy Hollow, on one song, upwards of 125 million YouTube views. Chef G, upwards of 42 million YouTube views. That's on one song alone. Such a large following. Individuals are looking to impress them. And Chef and company use the gang to carry out their threats. Just possess just tremendous control, influence, power over the entire neighborhood. You have to remember, they were idolized by so many and feared by so many more. But what did they do with this power? They used it to dictate and orchestrate violence. Let's speak once again to the tragic incident that really was the catalyst to initiate this case, the murder of Theodore Sr. One of six shot that horrific night. You saw the video, including several that were really just enjoying themselves out there. As gang members were directed, the quote, it bears repeating, one of the main gotta get hit. That text alone fueled these shootings. The gang ventured to the op's home base and fired bullets without remorse towards that large crowd that you saw. Three guns discharged showed zero regard for life. Now to add insult, and it was mentioned earlier, to all the victims, two days later, all of the participants of that murder were then treated to a gourmet steak dinner celebrating their accomplishment. That celebration hosted and paid by Chef and Sleepy. They actually wore matching outfits during it. One participant in particular was rewarded even further with a custom-made gold chain with the homicide's victim nickname on it. What an ultimate insult. In fact, promises of money, you saw them earlier, 5K, bounties as they were referred to. Not an ordinary. We had an individual um, known to us just out of jail. You know, really that, that, that individual that they thought was a snitch offended Chef that he had so much control and made it known. The response, Chef's gang ventured to where he routinely frequented and shot at him, striking those two unintended. Now you're talking about a 40 somewhat year old and a 50 somewhat year old, minding their own business, just caught in the crossfire. These are the individuals we focus our cases around. Just no regard of anybody who was in close proximity. And that's just so potentially horrific. I've said it almost at every press conference, but I'm gonna repeat it. Fired bullets have no names. Again, fired bullets have no names. Now the gang did not stop there. They remained absolutely relentless, sending a message and continued to hunt that same individual, kidnap him, throw him in the back of a car, bring him to a cemetery and dictate and initiate quite possibly the most ferocious and vicious beating I've seen. Now, I've been doing this 25 years. There's good reason we didn't play that video. Thank God for the Good Samaritan calling 911 for a prompt police response to interrupt it because, like, you know, the DA said earlier, it would have been grave. Now, these incidents, amongst so many others, illustrate just how these gangs dominate and terrorize our community. But today, we stand here quite proudly to say no more. So in all, 25 subjects now in custody as a result of this investigation. Now these are individuals that lived and affected our Brooklyn neighborhoods. Now these same individuals that showed little to no remorse as they carelessly fired guns and endangered all the great people of our Brooklyn communities are now behind bars. Just like to mention, this is one of numerous takedowns our gun violence suppression team has initiated and there's much more to come. Summer is approaching and we will remain at the forefront our teams will not let up, and we will continue, as always, to address every gang in this city, every street in this city, and every trigger puller in this city. 
We stand proudly and firmly to say criminality does and will have consequence, and this is exactly what it looks like. So a lot of kudos just to go around that made this happen. Um, former Brooklyn investigative chief Joe Galata, currently Andrew Arias, good a partner as they are. Um, along with those Brooklyn squads and the homicide squad, we really all worked as one throughout this investigation. Our DA, uh, Eric Gonzalez, dedicating your team's partnership. Al DeGeneres in, in particular, Kate Spoda, Roman Gelper, Edward Currens, and Amel Spahia. Just an absolute godsend, a challenging and robust investigation, and you really seamlessly held everything together. Our very own Chief, Chief of Detectives, Jimmy Essick, founded Gun Violence Suppression Division. We simply couldn't ask for a better mentoring coach, period. And our mayor, you really hold our torch so proudly and your genuine passion towards keeping this great community safe is so heartfelt. We're honored to have you as a leader. And lastly, a special thanks to the community that we serve, our community. This is why we became cops. This is why we became cops, to improve the quality of life of all individuals be the city's gatekeepers, and keep all of our members safe. There's a reading, reason that shootings are trending downwards. Now, traditionally, these cases just have a tremendous influence depleting violence. And now, while even one shooting is too many, historically, we see that dramatic change after these strategic investigations, not only in the immediate area, but it actually affects citywide. We're seeing that. So if history repeats itself to our community members, you will experience a better quality of life. You will have that neighborhood feel that you just so well deserve, and you will feel safer. We're gracious to be a partner. So we all collectively tackle this mission as one cohesive team, and as a result, our city is safer. Thank you. Are there any on-topic questions? How specifically orchestrating that violence benefited Shevchuk? Here's a guy who didn't really, right? Didn't have to do this. He had tons of money. How did that benefit him? Well, I, I think, in general, as um, Chief Savino said, you know, gang life is all encompassing. And uh, he was involved in gang life since he being a young man and the uh, influence that he had over the gang is something that I believe gave him and, and his uh, family uh, pride. You know, this is, it's hard to understand, but as the gang uh, got more influence, um, it was a source of pride for him. But I'll, I'll let the chief, you know, answer that more specifically. But this is something that we continue to see is that people who could exit gang life choose to continue um, to stay active in the gang life and ultimately when you have the amount of money and influence in the community that these uh, rappers had um, they actually make the gang more powerful because people want to join to be around them they're they're, they're famous yeah and that's a great question that that's something that even we consider and we kick around to tell you the truth, there's no straight answer. What I can tell you is throughout our investigations, we see this repeatedly, you know, where individuals are kind of up and coming, doing well, but they refuse to leave that gang life. And once again, you know, I mentioned earlier, Chef G, 42 million views, predominantly before he went into jail on guns. So he's trending. He's making bones for himself. He has the respect of the entire neighborhood and is feared by others. And a lot of individuals let that dictate their actions. And they just cannot give up the gang life. We have seen it successfully, you know, and, and, and we applaud it. There's tremendous programs out there. You know, um, I was part of the mayor's task force. You know, the, the, there's venues for individuals, but you have to give up the gang life. Otherwise, this is the consequence. Yeah, Eric, when you talk about these gangs expanding their territory, are they doing this to, uh, to sell drugs, uh, or is it just about violence for the sake of violence? It's a little bit of everything. Uh, there is obviously 
uh, narcotics are increasingly um, being sold, uh, but often it's about their own safety by forming these alliances. They're al allowed to travel into neighborhoods that they probably could not travel safely if they were ops within the organization. Now, that's the benefit to them. The downside is that they also then take on their, their alliance's enemies. So it expands the number of people who are now shooting on site. Uh, we see a lot of financial fraud in these uh, gang activity. And quite frankly, um, I think many of these gangs are moving more and more towards uh, bank fraud, uh, financial crimes, and even cryptocurrency uh, fraud. Mayor, you know, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm noticing in this case, when you're speaking about the defendants, you're, you're condemning their actions, speaking to how dangerous they are. It strikes a contrast with how you've spoken about Daniel Penn. You kind of avoided talking about the specifics of his case. Yeah, specifically, you said you have avoided doing that because you're concerned about tainting the potential prosecution. Why are you not concerned about tainting this prosecution? What's, what's the difference here? Uh, Chris, thank you for your question, and let's stay focused. Any other questions? Um, I know that you made a point of saying that uh, no rap lyrics were used in connection with this indictment. Can you talk to me about the importance of, of making that decision? Well, it, it's a you know it's a hot issue, um, whether or not. Um, courts and prosecutors should be allowed to use uh, rap lyrics to help prove their cases in court. I obviously think that those decisions should be left to a judge after weighing the probative value of the lyrics. Um, we see with drill rap and with other music that there are actual threats to name people made. Um, but I want it to be very clear for those who have those concerns that none of the lyrics used in this case, and if you go on and you listen, um, to either Chef G or Sleepy Hollow, there are clear references to uh, gang retaliation and actually mention of some of their um, rivals in the songs. None of that was used as evidence. None of that was presented to the grand jury in terms of our case. So this is just based on the investigation, the fine investigation conducted by the police department using surveillance and social media and text messaging and um, appropriate use of, of recovered cell phones and of course the guns right because the guns also tell a story and we should say I didn't mention this but there was a member in the gang who seemed to be one of the um, prominent traffickers of guns he would go down I believe it was South Carolina if that's correct he would go down South Carolina and repeatedly bring guns back a number of the guns he purchased legally in South Carolina, legally in the sense that he had some kind of ID in South Carolina, uh, were recovered in short order. So that iron pipeline is has been is present in this case. Yes. Two questions, please. Um, 25 in custody, where are the other seven? And can the mayor say something about the passing of George Perkins? That it, we have seven outstanding individuals. Um, you know, we also have a warrant squad, a regional fugitive squad, along with our gun violence suppression division that are actively seeking those individuals. Um, we're making arrangements as we speak, but um, that, that's about as far as I can go into it. They should turn themselves in. Yes, it, it's a great point. If you are out there, if you're out there, now's the time. Now's the time. Come see us. If not, we'll come to you. Let me finish any uh, other uh, one topic. Yes, yes. Mayor, um, there are violence interrupters in neighborhoods throughout the city. Given what you're seeing here, is it time to reevaluate the effectiveness of this program? Yeah, uh, first of all, they have done a Herculean job. You know, the part of our success of driving down uh, shootings. Uh, those who are able to stop the retaliatory shootings. And we are now going to roll out with Deputy Mayor uh, Sheena Wright and A.T. Mitchell from Man Up, uh, the next phase of how we're going to utilize our violent 
interrupters. We believe there is a broader plan of being more proactive, and they are excited about these new changes and how we're going to really uh, partner more with the police department and ensure that we can prevent some of these cases and connect people to some of the services that they need, those who are on the peripheral, uh, but also zero in on those who are the violent ones. These, these gangs, when you look at these gangs, they are shooters, they're extremely violent people, and then there's a body of people who are just caught up in the aura of it. We need to save those so that they don't go down the pathway to violence. Yeah, I was hoping uh, you could say more about this uh, steak dinner. We've got some of the details, but uh, you can get a, a little bit more, uh, I guess, detail about it. Where was it? Um, what was on the menu? That sort of thing. I was <laughs> yeah, matching outfits. What were those? Just, how'd you get in there to find? How'd you see what, what it all was? Yeah. I wasn't invited to the dinner. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it is a fine Manhattan uh, steak uh, uh, restaurant, which I'm not going to give the name of the restaurant. Um, but it was a fine restaurant, expensive restaurant. I've been there once in my life, and um, uh, food is very good. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's recorded. You know, our young people, and these aren't the youngest of the young people, but our young people record everything. And so um, there's a celebration. Um, it was centered around the score of hitting the uh, rival, the Folk Nation rivals, Hawthorne address. With the, that's the mass shooting where the six people were shot, um, and they celebrated the, the score. Um, you know, uh, there's really not much more to say other than it is how, in part, um, Chef G and uh, Tegan Chambers. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, uh, you know, assert influence, right? Because they take people out and they're able to spend money and they're able to uh, encourage others to do some of the gang violence that's just critically important to them and their status in the community. In response to uh, your question about Bill, uh, Bill uh, transitioned today. I spoke with his wife. Uh, he was a, a very dear friend. We served together in the state senate. Uh, we would ride back and forth from Albany on the train together, and just I just have so many fond memories of a person who dedicated his life on uplifting uh, people and fighting for uh, justice. He had a very balanced approach. Uh, he would feel extremely comfortable standing here to talk about renting guns um, from his uh, lovely uh, village of Harlem. And he was also uh, very proud to stand up to fight on behalf of those who were wrongly accused, like the Central Park Five. Uh, he has a very rich uh, history and legacy, and we lost a, a very a strong, committed uh, fighter for justice in the city. I wish, he, uh, wish his family well, and I'm going to miss him. Again, he was a very dear friend. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mayor. Good job, bro. Skyscraper, I rise in skyscraper tops. Plenty paper, money, plenty paper. We getting it. Tell my haters, tell them what. Tell my haters, tell them what. I'm on a mission. I'm on one. I see them later. Let's get it. Skyscraper, uh. skyscraper, all them. Plenty paper, one four nine. Plenty paper. Hey, tell my haters, tell my haters. We're legends is born. I'm on a mission. Let's get it. I see them later. You know what time it is? Skyscrapers. New paper, green gators matching new paper. Money, ice, silver, and black Oakland Raiders. Shining. More money, more problems, more haters. <laughs> I'm serving all tables like a waiter. Wait, Feeling like snowman got my waiter. Right down a fat bump and jada. All them. Letter to big, y'all know what baby, it baby. is. Skyscraper, I ride in skyscraper. Tops. Plenty paper, money, plenty paper. We getting it. Tell my haters, tell them what. 
tell my haters tell them what? I'm on a mission I'm on I see them later Let's get it. Skyscrapers uh. Skyscrapers All of them Plenty paper Plenty paper hey, Tell my haters Tell my haters I'm on a mission Let's get it. I see them later